So I guess I'm just embracing my inner desire to sit on the floor all the time nowadays. Uh, today we're looking at the Jolly Pumpkin Artisan Ales. Uh, that's the brewery. This is their Jovian, a fruited oak aged Saison. Um, never quite sure if I'm saying that right. Saison. Saison. It's a thing with all words borrowed from other languages, I guess. Uh, never sure if I should try and fake like a crappy accent and sound like I know what I'm talking about. But then it's like suddenly you're doing a different accent in the middle of your normal voice. It's like, what the... It's like, so what does Saison sound like in my accent? I guess it's however I want to say it, right? Saison. 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 Um, so this is a pretty cool looking can. Uh, definitely feel like it missed by a, a week the opportunity to drink it on Halloween. But you know what? I don't think it's necessarily even the most appropriate for Halloween. Uh, why is that? Well, hmm. Because... To me, I think of Saison's so far, and these farmhouse ales so far, is great warm weather working uh, drink. So when you're outside working, those, those Saison's, uh, the ones I've had, perfect in, in most cases for like outdoor labor, absolutely perfect. Kind of mid to low ABV percent, um, and light and crisp and dry and refreshing, great when they're cold, but also decent when they've warmed up from being outside with you. Uh, so now, why I picked this one today is because I'm going to be having some sweet and sour chicken on rice. And it's not exactly easy to find information right away on recommended food pairings, uh, food and beer pairings for Chinese food. Um, a lot of times I'll do a basic search for some ideas uh, right before I, I pick my beer for a meal. But, and usually answers come fast and furious. I have all sorts of ideas just in the first few results in Google. But this was not the case for trying to search best beer pairings with sweet and sour chicken. And even a lot of the kind of list articles about best foods for Chinese food, uh, excuse me, best beer pairings for Chinese food of all kinds, a lot of them didn't even mention the sweet and sour chicken. I was like, what the heck? Isn't this like a, you know, pretty basic American Chinese food dish? But hey, whatever. So I did land on someone who recommended Saison's as like the perfect pairing for Chinese food, and I can see it, I can imagine it, I think it will be a good pairing. So let's talk about this beer. A little stronger than I would have necessarily liked in this case. It's 6.7% uh, ABV. Uh, it would have been nice if it crept down a little, maybe below 6 or around 6 or less, uh, just because I want to be able to drink a lot of it. It's refreshing. It's uh, By the way, it's a warmer day today. It's Texas, it's Austin, it's November 5th, but it's warmer than it's been in a few days, actually. I'm sweating a little bit. I've had to run my AC off and on today. So it's going to be a good fit for the day, and it's getting you know it's going to be getting colder now, so I think my view on Saison is I should drink it now while it's fresher, and especially while the weather suits it better. Um, it's going to be good for this meal, I think, a, a good choice uh, for the sweet and sour chicken I'm going to be eating uh, with rice. I think better op it was a better option than a lot of some of the heavier beers. Definitely wasn't going to go with like a porter or a stout. Uh, I have some IPAs, but nothing like crisp. They're all hazy, kind of hazy and crazy, high ABV, double, triple AP IPAs. So those don't seem, they seem like they'd overpower the, the, the dish. And I wasn't even in the mood for one of those right now anyway. So I'm glad I found this guy. I was also considering a Berliner Weiss. Uh, a couple of those I had might have also been good. But I thought it would be overdoing the sour. So, um... Now, this ale is a part of their rotating series at the Jolly Pumpkin Artisan Ales. Uh, it's brewed with ale, brewed with buckwheat, with cranberries and kumquat added. So you could not give me a list of words. I would be less um, less sure what that's actually going to taste like. I don't know what buckwheat ale, I don't even know what buckwheat is. Cranberries are not my favorite fruit at all. In fact, they're one, the only berry I don't like, probably, are cranberries. I don't like them. And kumquat, I'm not really sure what that is, but if I liked it, I probably would know what it tasted like better. So I'm actually giving this one a chance. Uh, I'm expecting a refreshing, fizzy, sour. Remember, it's uh, this is oak-aged, right? Yeah, oak-aged, so I love oak. That's what's kind of saving this. And I like Jolly Pumpkin Artisan Ales, and I like their Saisons. I like their farmhouse ales that I've had, uh, their Bam Beer with the picture of the patchwork face dog on the front of the beer. Oof, that's where I discovered for me. I discovered this brewery, and I, I love Bam Beer. It was also my entry into craft, uh, not craft, I'm sorry, into farmhouse beers. That's where that started, actually. So major props in my book, from, from my end, to Jolly Pumpkin Artisan Ales with that cool can with the dog picture. Uh, Bam Beer really 
not only introduced me to that your brewery, but also got me into farmhouse ales, which are one of my favorites now. Just grisettes, farmhouse ales, uh, even saisons in a lot of cases. So there's a lot of overlap there, of course. And, and even moving on then to wild ales and uh, in then overlapping eventually with sours, which I already knew I liked before I discovered farmhouse ales. So that's that big kind of, uh, if you're doing like a cloud plot of all these different styles of beers, you can kind of trace the connection, or I can at least in my own history, uh, in a recent history, really the last seven, eight months of going from things I knew I liked, such as IPAs and pale ales, and uh, and now drinking farmhouse ales, saisons, stouts, and porters. Uh, to me, that's a major change. It feels major. Now, I was on the Jolly Pumpkin website. Uh, I will say I don't find it as easy or clear or aesthetically pleasing as some of the breweries I've gotten a chance to look at their websites. I think about this because I've done some web design in my past, and uh, Jolly Pumpkin's website is more like the website I might end up building, um, you know, it, it compared to, which I don't think is like, you know, the best website you'll ever see, uh, but it won't be bad. It just won't be remarkably good the way some of these, like Main Beer Company, I think is a remarkably good website to learn and experience about their, their company. And so uh, anyway, I didn't dig too much in their website. Uh, I did notice it's a Michigan brewery, uh, you know, guy who's a master of sour brewing and uh, founded the brewery in Michigan. So that's where they're from. I don't have that much more to say about this. Maybe I can discover it before I taste it. Uh, maybe I can discover where it, uh, da, 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 when it was canned. Not instantly seeing a can, canned on date or any kind of date. It's, it's these dark cans, the dark label cans, you never know if it's like right there and you're just not seeing it or if they didn't put one. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know. It's probably not worth our time. But la last little look, I mean, just beautiful artwork. I, I think that's awesome. That moon uh, in the skeleton, I, I had it up among five or six other beer beers while I was trying to pick this one and I just thought, man, this this something about this one really stands out. That artwork, uh, it's colorful, clean, distinctive, and among five other or six other great beers from great breweries, somehow this one really just the artwork was among the best. So jollypumpkin.com. Cheers and mah mahalo plenty, mahalo plenty, as a uh, I think a reference to Hawaii, which I believe might be where the founder now lives, or maybe I, maybe I was misunderstanding that. I, I don't know. Nice sound, nice sound. Not overflowing the can with fizz, which has happened recently, as anyone who watches a few of my other videos might notice. Okay, so let's see how this guy looks. I'm expecting, now this is just for my own sake, I'm expecting the oak-aged look, oak-aged farmhouse. So it's gonna be, not champagne colored, but you know, it's gonna be on that, I'm not good with colors. It's gonna be that light, crisp, bubbly color. All right, it's much darker than I expected, interesting. Well, I guess oak and the berries could easily do that. I don't know if the buckwheat has any influence. Mm, okay, smells a lot like what I was expecting. Uh, especially once my mind adapted to the color. It's, it's, it's a little whinier smelling than I would have guessed before I looked at it. Yeah, whiny, berry, kind of overripe berries. I heard that word recently, and I was like, oh, that sums up a lot of these... That's a good word for what I'm smelling. It's like a wine, overripe berry smell. Definitely smell the sour ale smell, that classic kind of sour or wild smelling. Uh, let's give it a taste. Mm. Mm. The buckwheat, that's got to be what that second taste was. The first one is the cranberries. My hesitant mmm because I don't love cranberries, as I said. This tastes like cranberry. Uh, I like it. It's good. This makes me like cranberries more. Uh, but, so, that's cool. But the cranberry itself is going to hold me back from this ever being a favorite. It's real, real, quite sour, especially in the lingering aftertaste. It almost gets more sour as the aftertaste goes on. That's kind of unusual. Um, so, so far I'm getting, the beginning is cranberry sour right up front. Then... A buckwheat, I think that's what that is, because that would explain the second taste. That just sounds right. A weedy, buckwheaty, like a pan, uh, like an unflavored pancake taste or something. Not sweet, but like pancake batter, unsweetened, just for a moment or two. I don't know if that makes sense. And then, 
And then I think what I remember is it went on to a sour taste that got more and more intense in sourness as it faded. So that was interesting. Cranberry and sour ale, then winey taste. Less of that buckwheat in the middle, maybe because I was expecting it, anticipating it this time. But it's still like a, I can still see this kind of wheat undertone. Yeah, like a buckwheat. I guess that just reminds me of like cowboy pancakes or something. Like something really plain and pancakey, wheat tasting, but not sweet. But you know, wheat, wheat by itself kind of has a sweet element to it. Not you know, a major one, but uh, anyway. And then, and then the sour, yeah, it's kind of like at the end now, it's mingling tart, tart sour and, uh, and that wheat bread sort of taste. So I like this. This is good. Now, is it going to be a great pairing for the sweet and sour chicken I'm about to grab? I'm not so sure anymore. The sourness is quite tart and quite sour in this ale. And uh, the I don't know. I feel like it might compete a little much, but hey, it could go either way. So let's get that out of the oven and um, I'll see what this, how this pairs with that sweet and sour chicken. Be right back. So uh, my sweet and sour chicken is out of the oven. Now, just so you understand, this is kind of like a local Austin restaurant's called Snap. Uh, they do meal delivery services. I'm not sponsored or anything. Um, and uh, I'm trying out a thing I haven't had from them before. It is um, kind of a health food type place. So this is brown rice. It's pretty basic brown rice, chicken, uh, and, um, and some kind of healthy sweet and sour sauce. So I'm not, I'm trying to say it's not going to be like a decadent style, uh, you know, takeout meal, uh, but still now I've been thinking about this drink on its own and how I expect it to, to contrast or compete or complement whatever this kind of healthy brown rice, um, sweet and sour chicken dish I have. And I just keep thinking while I'm sipping this, first of all, do I like this beer or not? The answer is definitely yes. Uh, I'm a little on the fence in one way. Uh, it's not like I would ever say I dislike this. This is good. It's tasty. Um, but I, I know I like it because I keep sipping it. So it's easy to keep sipping it. Um, I've noticed this happens to me a lot. My experience with a single first can of a new beer. I have these expectations before I open it. I'm like giddy with how I expect it to taste. It's going to be, oh, this and that. It's going to taste like what I've been looking for. Then I taste it and it's not, it disappoints me. Why? Not because it's bad, but because it doesn't meet my expectations. Then as I keep sipping it a little longer, I realize, whoa, this, this is good for what it is. It's not what I expected, but what it is, is, is maybe even better than what I expected, or at least as good, or still very good, even if it's not quite as good as I hoped. So, and then by the end of a, of a can, and sometimes by the end of a four pack or a six pack, I like love that, that ale much more than when I first sipped it. So, uh, quickly noticing something like that happening here as my expectations uh, adapt to what I'm actually getting, and then being like, you know what, what I'm getting is pretty dang good. Uh, so, very whiny. It's also still, I just keep thinking, this is a wine, <laughs> a whiny, a wine tasting beer, a sour wine, sour cranberry wine, fizzy is kind of how this is. Mm. I like, I like this kind of beer. This is what I associate with refreshing beer when you can sip it quickly and it's delicious and refreshing, or you can sip a slower sip and let it linger. And it's also more, it's complex and delicious. See, that's to me a refreshing and high quality beer is one that you can sip quickly. Like the, uh, the upfront, the first half of the taste is great. Just refreshing and delicious. You can keep tasting it over and over and drinking it. Uh, the second half is lingering and interesting if you want it to linger and be interesting. And that's what I'm getting here. You can, you can sip it, taste it the long way, or just kind of keep not chugging it. It's too fizzy to chug. but keep taking refreshing sip after refreshing sip. Now, on that note though, there's one criticism I have for sure, and that's, I think it's too strong, too strong in alcohol. I, I still think that's for sure. Because why do I want a refreshing beer? Well, I want a refreshing beer because I'm doing work that I need refreshment from, or because it's hot that I need refreshment from. Well, in both of those cases, I don't want to get plastered drunk 
with uh, you know my refreshment. So I'm a little irked because uh, if this was more like a five percent or even less, I could I could go less and not you know a four point five percent. Maybe the five percent range would be perfect for this low five percent uh, in my opinion because then I could get more work and keep drinking it. Probably buy more of their cans of it. As is, I doubt I'm going to buy another can simply because it doesn't fill the right spot in the Venn diagram of my life, right? I, it's too it's too much a w refreshing work farmhouse saison for me to replace my 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 epic beers like the craft IPAs and stouts. It's just too light to hold. It's not to hold up to that kind of heavyweight tasting. Uh, but it's also too strong to take the place of the light, refreshing beers. For example, my ideal might be like the Jester King Bug Farm or, uh, you know, a farmhouse ale that's around 4% ABV. It's too strong to replace that. So kind of in this uh, no man's land, I'm thinking, last thing to do. I don't want to talk forever. Let me taste this meal real quick. Uh, you know me. I don't like just eating on streams. Let me just taste it and then compare with the drink. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Interesting. That's very interesting. That goes nicely. Having an interesting experience. So again, just for anyone watching at this point, pairing a healthy brown rice, sweet and sour chicken with pumpkin artisan ales, Jolly Pumpkin artisan ales, Jovian, which is a fruited oak aged saison uh, brewed with buckwheat, cranberries, and kumquat. And it's it's cool. That's a that's a cool pairing because the the beer definitely doesn't overpower the food. In fact, it's unusual to me because it after two sips of this after my food bite two sips later i could still taste elements of the food uh, that's unusual for me maybe it's just the beers i'm choosing but usually the first taste of beer wipes out the food taste um maybe i need to think about that more carefully in the future because it's kind of nice how you can actually the two tastes sort of meld together or overlap or don't destroy each other that's kind of nice um Excuse me. The buckwheat. I, you know, it's funny because I was like, I don't even know what buckwheat is. I still don't really. I'm just going off my imagination. But the buckwheat taste that I'm thinking I, I taste goes nicely with the brown rice. Kind of a nice little connection there in the drink and the food, uh, between the drink and the food. I like the beer better than the food. I've never had this dish before uh, from, from this restaurant. Um, the beer's a little better. Let's try one more. Sorry, this is just, this is just really interesting. I want to see how this how this uh, continues. So one more and then we'll kind of wrap it up. All right. Yeah, it's still like wine, cranberry wine. That's kind of my final uh, word on this Jovian uh, Saison. It's it's um, the, wi the wine, the cranberry, the sour, the buckwheat. Those are the tastes that predominate. It, the experience is fun, refreshing. Um, I think you want to keep this beer cold. That's my opinion. Uh, well, I don't know. It, it, it actually tastes good as it warms up. So what I mean is I like to start this kind of farmhouse ale, start it off as cold as I can get it, and let it warm up because different tastes will definitely appear from start to finish. The buckwheat, uh, I think, makes this sort of special. I think it's buckwheat that I'm tasting, and I think that's what I like about it um, the most. So I don't really taste any kumquat. I don't even know what that's supposed to taste like, so maybe I taste it and I don't notice. I taste the oak, um, and at the end of the day, it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, almost whiskey-like uh, color, and... Um, I think that's beautiful as well. So highly would definitely recommend this if this has sounded good to you. If I've said anything that turns you off, I would still say it's worth a try uh, if you're trying to get into something 
tr develop your palate for one of these things that I've brought up, the oak, the farmhouse ale, the sours, those are all things that this is going to help you learn more about. Um, but yeah, I mean, Jolly Pumpkin, I will say every time I see them, I want their stuff. I want their special releases. Um, and they're right on up there with just, they, they really won me over uh, immediately with that farmhouse uh, bam beer. So uh, signing off for now. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. It means it's the world to me. Just got my first subscriber and uh, uh, it's so nice knowing that I'm not just shouting into the void. So um, don't forget anything you can do to communicate or um, let me know what you think helps me out so much. Okay, so like, subscribe, dislike, I guess if you have to, uh, leave a comment it means a ton to me. And I will see you in the next review. My fridge is still pretty full, although I've been powering through some of these interesting beers I ended up getting. Okay, talk to you in the next video. See ya.